Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. And today I am in Caesarea. You are watching a recent shoot I did in Caesarea Maritima, which is in Israel. It's right on the coast of the Mediterranean. It's north of Tel Aviv and south of Haifa. You can see on this virtual map, Caesarea is a very cool place. This is a harbor that was built by Herod the Great. For anybody that's done any time in Israel or knows anything about archeology span and history, you'll know that Herod the Great was an insane person who killed almost all of his family members, but he was also a genius when it came to architecture. So getting to spend the day in Caesarea is, is just wild. When Herod the Great built the port city of Caesarea, it really was a marvel at the time. The engineering that went into it, knowledge of architecture and building materials, and the way he was able to build his palace on the Mediterranean was incredible. I don't think there was any other builder quite like Herod the Great during that period of time. And of course, because the whole area was under Roman rule and Herod wanted to maintain his leadership over the province of Judea, he named Caesarea after Caesar, which is a pretty good strategic way of keeping your head. But that was 2,000 years ago. During that time, the time of Herod the Great to today, Caesarea has gone through numerous earthquakes, battles. It's been conquered and destroyed and reconquered and rebuilt and redestroyed. There's so much of Caesarea that you can find on land, but there's probably even more that you can see of Caesarea under the water. So I'm very excited to catch up with Morris, uh, my underwater tour guide today, who's gonna take us on a little adventure uh, through the history of Caesarea underwater. All right, so I am here in Caesarea, or as they say in Israel, Caesarea, and we're at the uh, Caesarea Dive Center, and I am with Morris. Hi, hello. How are you? Good, good, thank you. Good. How, how are you doing? Good. This is my first time. This is my first time diving here, and I'm very excited. And uh, today, what are you? What are you going to show us? So we are in Caesarea. It's a, um, it's a um, archaeological park. All what you see above the surface, above the water, it's actually more or less what we're gonna see under the water, which means pillars, maybe some polished stones, anchors. So what we have here, the shadows that you can see, the black shadows, this is actually the old harbor of Herodos, wow. which was built 2000 years ago, almost more or less 2000, a bit and more. It was the first to be built in artificial way on a sandy ground the way they have done it if you can see the cascades here the they actually created those wooden caskets because by then they tried to actually build a port and harbors on a natural rocky rocky area such a bay or a gulf so what they did they brought those and they added soak on them some uh, volcanic ash volcanic ash okay. yeah which they brought from italy so it makes like cement right exactly it's a concrete it's yeah. what we call the roman concrete okay so once it sank down to the ground and the ash meet the salty water straight to turn into concrete wow. and this was used as the foundation of this harbor as you can tell so this is a diagram for the actual harbor how, how it looked like by wow. then okay all right, there's a little bit from Morris, who is an amazing underwater tour guide. He knows a lot about this area. So let's dive in.
right, Morris and I are having a great time diving in Caesarea and we're seeing lots of cool stuff. And you may have noticed that I am wearing this bad boy. This is the waterproof seven millimeter semi-dry suit. I wanted to do a review on this suit. This, uh, this dive that you're watching, this is actually my second dive in this suit, but it's my first time diving this suit in salt water. Of course, I wish we'd recorded all the mayhem in getting ready for our dive. It was a pretty busy morning. If I had been able to record that, you would have seen us struggling to figure out the weight for this suit. It's quite buoyant. I really like it. The water that we were diving in that day was pretty chilly. Even though it's the Mediterranean, we're, I was diving in early spring. It, it gets cold. So having a semi-dry suit was really nice. However, the buoyancy that this gave me was uh, a little more than I expected. In fresh water, uh, I didn't need near as much weight, but I had to add 29 pounds to get this uh, to get this down. I think the biggest reason though is because we're diving really shallow. I think our deepest depth was like 16 feet. So for those of you who dive, you know that that's a tricky spot to be in. It would have been better if we could have been down 30, 40 feet, but I really didn't want to go shooting up to the surface. We're trying to stay close to the bottom because that's where all the cool stuff is. But this suit, not only did it keep me toasty warm through the entire dive, this kept me completely warm and actually I was fairly dry. I was surprised at, at how dry after an hour long dive uh, I was. If you were able to talk to Morris afterwards, you would have seen that he was not as warm as I was. Some of the nice features of the waterproof suit are these cuffs, nice uh, tight seals around the wrists. So both around uh, the wrists and the ankles. It's got a nice, nice tight seal and around the neck as well. A lot of times when I'm wearing my dry suit, the dry suit, I feel like I'm being choked, but uh, this kept a nice tight seal without making me feel like I was uh, being choked when I was on the surface. Waterproof is uh, not a sponsor, by the way. I have a few of their products, uh, the hoods and my wetsuit. I think waterproof is kind of a funny name for a wetsuit for a wetsuit company. They're a bit pricey, a little more expensive than some of the other wetsuits out there, but they make a very, very good product. I do not regret buying this suit at all. Anyways, back to our dive. Morris and I are now checking out some more of these underwater ruins. What I find most fascinating about diving here is getting to see these bricks and stones, which as you dive through this, if you don't know what you're looking at, it looks like just a bunch of rocks. But anybody that knows archeology span and history knows that every one of these rocks has a story. These rocks at one point were standing up and were parts of buildings and structures and the things that they've seen. Caesarea was a major port city and during its time, there was a lot of famous characters that we read about in the history books that actually were here. One of the famous people that we know was in Caesarea, and we know this because a stone was found 
with his inscription, with his name on it, is Pontius Pilate. Where do we know that name from? That's from the crucifixion story. Pilate, we know, was the governor of the region of Judea during the time of Jesus. And here in Caesarea, they found a stone with his name inscribed on it. That's just wild. But here under the water, we've got large stones from the buildings. We have pottery. Morris was even reaching down and finding bits of pottery that had just been laying there for 2,000 years. There's also been numerous anchors that have been lost uh, during the winter time, the waves, the storms that hit this region uh, can be quite violent. So there's also numerous shipwrecks. And you've had everybody from the Crusaders to Napoleon to the Mamluks, the Ottomans who've come through this area. There's so much world history that is relevant to all of us today that has happened in this area. And here it is perfectly preserved underneath the waters. I'm watching Morris as he reaches down amongst the rocks and he pulls out something that I did not expect. A drone. Somebody lost a drone out here. Okay, well that was a lot of fun. Uh, it's my first time diving in the Mediterranean. I've done a lot of snorkeling, a lot of swimming in the Mediterranean. But my first time diving, really cool seeing all the, uh, the ruins from all the ages here in, in Caesarea, from the time of King Herod through to, uh, to, well, just about every age has got some evidence of it down here. But Caesarea is a very, very beautiful place. Thank you to Maurice and to uh, the Caesarea Dive Center. A lot of fun. A lot of very cool things when you come to Israel. Well, there you go. That's a little bit of uh, underwater exploration in the land of Israel at the port of Caesarea. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, turn on notifications, and keep coming back because I've got more videos with scuba diving, Israel stuff, and history and camera reviews. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.